Valtje Awali my friends, welcome back to Our Legends. In today's video we're going to look into the story of Ireland's ghost room, more specifically room number 2 in Rhetoric House in my new college in County Kildare. Now this story is very near and dear to me, being a Kildare man myself, and also Minute is like a second home to me. My family used to own a pub there, my son is from there, I'm very familiar with the place. Now I first came across this story when I was much, much younger than what I am now, at the ripe old age of 16, in my family's pub, closing up, and there was a trainee priest having a few pints at the end of the bar. He told me this amazing story. Now, he was drinking, so I didn't believe him. But the more I looked into it, I began to question it. But before we begin guys, if you could hit the subscribe button, give the video a like if you're enjoying it, it helps the channel out a ton. Also, comment down below, let us know what part of the world you're watching from, and let us know what you thought of the video. So, with all that out of the way, let's dive into the story of Ireland's ghost room. During the 17th and 18th centuries, penal laws prevented the tuition of Catholic priests in Ireland, and many were sent to be educated in Europe, in particular France. The French Revolution made the British government fearful of priests returning to Ireland with revolutionary ideas to stir up the Irish even more. About the same time, under the Catholic Relief Acts, the penal laws were beginning to be repealed. In 1795, an act for the better education of persons professing the popish or Roman Catholic religion was passed by the Irish Parliament and Manute College was founded soon afterwards. From small beginnings with just 40 students and 10 professors, the college grew quickly, and by 1850 it had become the largest seminary in the world, ordaining more than 11,000 priests to date. The disturbing story of the haunted room at Manute College concerns room number 2 on the top floor of Rhetoric House, a residential house for trainee priests, built in 1834. Our first incident occurs on the 1st of March 1841. Sean O'Grady, a young student from Limerick who was staying in room number 2, gruesomely killed himself with a razor. The gruesome scene was discovered after the resident of room 2 missed the day's lectures. When his friends went looking for him, they found him in his room, soaking in a pool of his own blood from a self-inflicted gash across his throat. Room 2 was vacant for the rest of the year. He was buried in plot 21 of the college cemetery. The room claimed its next victim a few years later, when a second student followed the same apparently irresistible urge and was found dead one morning, having slit his throat with a razor. The third victim, Thomas McGinn, had arrived at Minute a week early to take his matriculation tests. During this time he stayed in room number 2, but when term started he was moved to a different room. Some days later he was told about the suicides that had occurred in the room he had previously occupied. And this weighed on his mind. After mass on the Friday morning, McGinn went back to room number 2, cut himself with a razor in an attempt to end his life then threw himself out of the window. He was taken to the infirmary, where he was attended by Dr. McCarthy, the Vice President of the college. McGinn then gave harrowing accounts of several demonic occurrences that occurred in room number two. Before succumbing to his injuries, McGinn told college authorities that he had seen a demonic face in the mirror that morning. He became compelled by a powerful urge to end his life and grabbed his razor uncontrollably, struggling against what he believed was a demonic force manipulating him to cut his own throat, he threw himself through the window to make it stop. Sadly, McGinn could not recover from his injuries. He was buried near O'Grady in plot 29 of the college cemetery. After these events, no one dared stay in room number two. However, there was one priest who volunteered to keep vigil in the room one night to try and determine what kind of evil presence was in the room that was causing these young men to kill themselves. The next morning, he was found in a terrified state. His hair had turned white and he was unable to talk about what he had experienced throughout the night. Dr. McCarthy, shaken by the grisly string of events, pressed the college into taking action and an entry in the College Trustees Journal reads, October 23rd, 1860. The President is authorised to convert room number two 
on the top corridor of Rhetoric House, an oratory of St. Joseph. The front wall of room number two was removed. The window bricked up and a statue of St. Joseph was erected. St. Joseph being the patron of a peaceful death. Room number two was also investigated by paranormal researcher and author Hans Holzer and by the psychic Sybil Leake in the 1960s. Leake described a strange feeling of a four-legged animal in the room, a dreadful fear and a desire to run to the statue where the window used to be. The oratory became a waiting area between academic offices. The statue still remains and the window bricked up, though it is still visible from the outside. There is a recurring story among Manuch students that the dark stains on the floor are in fact human blood and allegedly this is confirmed by the college's chemistry department and it can't be removed no matter what cleaning products are used. So that is the story of Ireland's ghost room, the Manute ghost room. Not much is known about these stories, just dribs and drabs here and there. Because at the time suicide was regarded as a horrifying sin. The matter was covered up by the college. The students were even buried in an unconsecrated part of the college cemetery, away from the other graves. This is a grave injustice. But who knows what could really be lurking in room number two in Minute. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Jay from Our Legends. Good night and good luck. Woo! <laughs>